Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how I painted my Kroot Farstalker Kinband for Kill Team. I chose this model as the example to paint in the video. Awesome model, a Kroot warrior, and it really reminds me of Scarface the movie. So I think this is just the perfect one to choose out of the whole bunch. My plan was to get this whole kill team painted really quickly to a tabletop ready standard and I'm happy with the results. So to do that I chose to use mostly contrast paints, quick and easy techniques and I'll put a list of all the paints I've used down in the description. And I'll also put a link to my sponsor Firestorm Games where you can save up to 20% on your paints and all your other hobby products too. And they've been really cool and sent me a code to share with you so you can save an additional 5% on top of those prices. That's the code is down in the description as well. It'd be great if you check them out and make yourself a saving. And a huge thank you to Firestorm Games for sponsoring the channel. Right, let's go. So I primed my models in black and then I did a white zenital prime right from the top and I used my airbrush. Now you could use a spray can, you could do a black spray can and then dry brush white. You could even just use a wraith bone, which is typical for contrast paints. But I wanted to do something a little bit different and really play on the idea that they're lurking in the shadows, waiting to pounce on their prey. The first paint I used was a Contrast Militarum Grey and you've got to be careful with these because sometimes they don't mix that well so I gave it a really good shake until all that was mixed together. Then I'm just going to put a coat on all of the crude skin. Now you can see this is quite a dark paint and going over the zenital it really is going to be dark in places but that's what we want, that's the whole idea, we want that shadow but we are going to lighten it up a little bit later on with some dry brushing to pick out the most raised areas but the zenital prime really does make a difference on the uppermost parts like the biceps here and the different parts of the head especially that's going to be certainly a lot brighter so just trust the process and give it a nice even coat all over you'll notice I'm not going crazy I'm not completely flooding this but I am working it in all the recesses even in the mouth making sure it gets right in there because that's going to give us the depth and our shadows and when it dries this is the result we're going to get you can see much darker from below much lighter from above so once that's completely dry we take some nurgling green dry paint and then I've got this very small army painter small dry brush if you haven't seen these dry paints before, then this is what they look like. So if you get one and you think it's ruined, this, this is what it's supposed to be. It's very gunky, very spongy and springy. And so when you dip your brush in, it's not going to get an awful lot of moisture in there. So that's going to work really nicely as you work it into the bristles. Normally I use any paint to dry brush with, and I actually bought this by mistake. I just wanted the colour, but it works great. So I think I might have to pick up a few more of these dry paints actually in the future. So all I'm going to do is work it into the bristles, get most of it off on the paper towel and now be very careful just to lightly brush over the most raised parts where I think the light would hit the most. And that's going to be again these raised muscles on the outside, the ankle, all the bones and like the sharper structures. So I'm really using those bristles gently. Once I'm happy with the amount of paint that's coming off, I can be a bit rougher and just go over it a bit more. And you can see that's really transformed it now. It's brightened it up and this is going to bring out all the texture of the model. The model's doing all the work for you here. You're just applying the paint carefully to bring it all out and then uh, you're going to be left with a really nice result I think. But just be careful not to go in all the gaps and the lines because you really want that darker shade to be coming through. And don't worry about going over parts of the other of the model like the gun and the cape because we're going to paint over that layer. And here we go you can see that's completely changed it now much better. Now it's time to take some contrast wild wood, a nice dark brown colour and I'm just going to use this in places such as the butt of the gun here and then I'm going to look around the model just picking out areas where I think we could have some dark leather. I'll turn the model making it nice and easy for myself so I can brace my arms on the table so the model's upside down here but it means I can keep my paint in hand in the same position almost and just work that paint in nice and easily and have full control. I'm also going to paint this strap here. I thought that suited it. Have a little bit of dark leather going around there holding this extra ammo. Next I took some contrast snake bite leather. I love this colour. Really great. One coat gives you a really nice leather effect. It's kind of more of a yellowy brown so it's going to work nicely against the wildwood which is the darker brown. And so again I'm picking out bits of material like the 
little band, the armband there, and then the material around the back. And so it just breaks it up. But I think these models are great for all these different brown colours. Here's another one, Gore Grunter Fur. We're going to use that next. And this is going to go on their hair. And so that's going to go in nice and thick. Now working it in. And again, not flooding it. But here you've got to put quite a lot on because you do have a lot of surface area amongst all the different bristles. Then I took Contrast Flesh Tear as red, and this is going to be for the cloak. Now, on a lot of them, I use Snake Bite Leather for the cloak. I thought that worked well, but for the leader, I used this colour, and I liked it. So I thought it'd be fun to do it on this guy, because it is my favourite model, and so I want him to stand out a little bit on the tabletop. I think the pose is just brilliant, so yeah, really love this model. When I paint these larger sections with contrast paint, I'll try and break them up into natural sections and then paint that before moving on to the next. And I find that works really well. Then I took base lead belcher and now I'm going to paint in all the metal areas, which is pretty much the gun here. There's a blade on the butt of the gun as well. And some of them have got little wristbands you can paint. Some have got little triangle medallions and things like that. So just have a look for those. You can even paint the little rings in the hair. But again, I'm going tabletop ready. So I didn't muck about and I didn't pick out the very small details. I did want to do the tongue though, so I took some Doomfire Magenta. You could use Volupus Pink for this or even Purple, that would work. I'm just going to dot in the tongue there. I didn't do it on all of them, but I thought this guy deserved it because he is pretty cool. And I'm not going to be painting the eyes. No need to, I don't think, at this stage. Then I took Base Abaddon Black. And this is going to be just for the end of the gun here. And so I've just watered this down a little bit, using my wet palette, and then I get a nice even coat. It's nice and controlled. You can put two coats on if you want. Then when it's all dry, I took some null oil and I worked that over everything that I painted with the lead belcher and the black and then covered that. And again, this is going to bring out texture. So we're going to get all the shading coming from this now, all the texture of that weapon coming through. Then I took Contrast Agarus Dunes, which is a golder colour. And just for the cartridge that's popping out the top there and these ones around his leg, I'm just giving those a little coat just to break that colour up. Once all of that was completely dry, I took some Stormhost Silver, and this is the brightest silver I've got. I've got to try some new ones out. Thanks again for your recommends. I'll definitely be trying them out. And I just go over this with the same dry brush technique, very gently though, so I know how much paint is coming off the brush. I even go over the black here, because that's all metal, and then just work around till you're happy. Then I took this thick mud from Vallejo. This stuff is awesome. Great for basing, brilliant value. And then some Army Painter Battlefields Grass Green. I took this little scoop and I just take that mud out of the pot. This has got all little lumps in it as well. So it's really cool stuff. I love that. I can't praise this highly enough, this Vallejo. I've covered it a lot on the channel if you want to check out those videos to see it in more detail. But basically coat the base with it and then sprinkle on a little bit of grass and that's all you're going to need to do at this stage but we can go a little bit further and we'll add some little shrubs in a moment but what I do is I do this over some white paper fold it in half so I can just easily pick it up and then pop all that back in the pot when I'm finished. Check these out these are Gamer Grass Tuft Set garden flowers. Now these are going to really bring the models to life. So we've gone for quick easy techniques. Now we're going to jazz them up a bit with a nice bright colour and I think these are fantastic products. I've still got to do a big video because I've got a lot of these to go through uh, for my Katachan army. So look out for that. That's coming soon. And here we go. I've gone for pink. I thought that would work really nicely against the green. You can see you've got all different size shapes ones. Looks like a golf course when it's all laid out. But I'm just going to pick off little bits and tear it. So you don't have to use the whole thing in one go. And I'm going to put two or three on each base. And I've done this for the whole kill team so it ties them in and makes them look like they all belong together it's also going to be easy to find them on the battlefield you're not going to miss these and you can use the tool just to press that down then it's werewolf fur by war paints army painter again and i'm going to give two or three nice coats all around the rim and then that's going to be us pretty much finished but there is a final step you can take if you want to and i've started doing this and that is to take some technical storm shield and just do a coat around the base that's like a varnish and it's just going to give a little bit extra protection when you're using the models. And here he is, the Croot Warrior, all painted to a tabletop ready standard. Nice, quick and easy with some simple techniques. I'm really happy how it turned out. I think the Croots are all well suited. 
to the different contrast paints, the greens and the browns. And using that Zenodal Prime really gave some depth to it and created that shadowy look that I was going for. And I did a similar thing when I painted the Imperial Navy breeches as well. So when they're all laid out together, these are going to be mostly fighting amongst trees and things like that. I won't be using them that much in the Gallo Dark. But um, if I want to, it's still going to work nicely, uh, even though I've done the bases with all these flowers. But here's all the other models. I batch painted everything except for the one I did in this video. So I did them all at the same time. So it's nice and quick. And when you do these techniques, you're just going through one colour paint on all the models and then moving on to the next colour. And before you know it, you've got the whole kill team finished. I really like these models. When I first saw them in Into the Dark box set when it was revealed, they were my favourite. But I've got to say, after building and painting everything and looking through the rules, the navy breeches are standing out to me now. So it's those I'm looking forward to playing the most in Into the Dark. But I'm certainly going to be playing these in some other scenarios against my um, raptors. And they're going to be going on the board with some trees and ruins. I can't wait to give it a go. If you'd like to see more about the Kill Team Into the Dark, I've done unboxing videos, I've gone through the books so you can see the full book reviews, I've shown how to prepare the terrain before you paint it, then how to get it painted to a quick and easy tabletop ready standard, I've gone through how to paint the little barricades that come in the set, your combat gauges so you can theme them for the different factions, I've also gone through how to build your Crute Firestalkers and your Navy Breachers and all the different operative options that you have. Then you can see how to paint the Navy Breachers as well as the Crutes here. And then finally, you're going to want to play the game. So I've got you covered with all the rules for Kill Team going right from the beginning and up to and including the new rules for Into the Dark. I hope you enjoyed this painting video and I've really enjoyed getting this set ready and sharing the progress with you here on the channel and I'd love to hear what you think about this method, this quick and easy tabletop painting method. So let me know in the comments section below and also let me know how you're getting on with Kill Team. Have you picked it up? Are you enjoying it? Let me know down below. But for now, thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, please hit the like button, subscribe for more videos like this one and don't forget to hit that notification bell too to join me here next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make these daily videos possible. And if you're interested in joining the community, it'd be awesome to see you there. And I'll put a link for that in the description down below. <laughs>